but your kind of soft voters, the people who like, you know, I might vote, I might not, that uh, proportion of people is increasing, I think. And we can see that reflected in the proportion of people who've turned out to vote. Recently published Afrobarometer survey results indicate that there has been a steady decline in the level of trust in institutions amongst South Africans. Joining me to unpack some of the insights is Marius Root from the Institute of Race Relations. Marius, welcome to the CRA channel. Marius, in the lead up to the local government elections and given the Electoral Commission's poor performance generally, where do current trust levels in the institution currently sit? Well, it's uh, quite interesting and also quite concerning if we uh, look at the Afro-Parameter survey results. Uh, just for a bit of background for every listening. Uh, this is a survey that's been conducted. This was the sixth survey that was conducted now in 2021 and uh, uh, goes back to 2006. And in 2006, 32% of South Africans said they didn't trust the IEC at all or only a little bit. And this has been increasing steadily since then. So by the time we get to 2021, 57% uh, of South Africans say they didn't trust the IEC at all or only a little bit. Now, there's probably a couple of reasons for this. Uh, it's probably linked to, uh, you know, the people in opposition parties, you know, sometimes casting aspersions on uh, election results. There's also uh, the issue that uh, people might have themselves have seen that uh, the IEC hasn't uh, handled things all that well. And I think uh, in recent, uh, I mean, with what's been happening uh, in the past few months, we've seen the IEC hasn't exactly covered itself uh, with glory in the way that it's uh, in the lead up to these local government elections. And it raises an open question whether they are going to be ready for um, the elections on 1st November. Uh, one thing I think we can be certain of, this is probably going to be the most chaotic South African election since uh, 1994. Another interesting insight from the Afrobarometer survey is the is South Africans' willingness to forego the elections. Morris, can you tell us a bit about the outcomes of this question? So another uh, question that was asked uh, in this poll was how willing, or the, the question itself, uh, to, I'll give it to you in full, I think it's quite relevant. If a non-elected government or leader could impose law and order and deliver houses and jobs, how willing or unwilling would you be to give up regular elections and live under such a government? Now, what's quite worrying is that in 2006, a third of South Africans said they'd be very willing to live under as that type of government, and 24% said they'd be willing. So that gives you, what, 57% of South Africans in 2006 said they'd be very willing or willing to live under a government that could, you know, under a strong man type leader, let's call it that. Now, this has also seen a steady increase. By 2006, 46% of South Africans said they'd be, uh, but by 2021, sorry, 46% of uh, South Africans said they'd be very willing to live under such a government, and 21% said willing. So that gives you 46 plus 21 gives you 67%. So nearly two th or two thirds of South Africans are willing to live under a government where they forego, um, a, you know, uh, forego having elections. And by extension, that probably means you're willing to give up a number of other, uh, you know, civil and human rights things, such as uh, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, most likely, and all the kind of stuff that comes with living under a liberal democracy. So I think this is also all part of, uh, you know, a lot of uh, the promise of 1994 has been lost, I think. Uh, Obviously, South Africa is still a much better place uh, today than it was in 1994. Uh, but uh, a lot of the progress we've made uh, since then, uh, we've either stalled or even in some, uh, sometimes we've gone backwards. Uh, you know, in the 1990s and early 2000s, the economy uh, was, especially in the early 2000s, the economy was growing rapidly, 5% uh, five, 5 a year on average sometimes. Uh, we had uh, the, the government was keeping spending under control. We even had budget surplus, uh, I think twice in the early 2000s. But uh, since 2010, uh, we've seen a lot of this uh, progress reverse. And then this also has an impact on service delivery. If a government does have money to pay for things, this means it's got uh, less money to pay for, you know, increasing infrastructure, for to give more people uh, access to water and electricity, to pay for schools and all that kind of thing. And also, at the same time, this government's also becoming uh, far more uh, hostile to uh, the private sector and business. And as much as uh, the government may, may or may not like it, that is where jobs get created. And we've seen the latest uh, unemployment figures. They're absolutely shocking. If you look at the expanded unemployment rate, I think about 43% of South Africans are unemployed. 
So it's uh, not surprising that some people are starting to think maybe, you know, maybe democracy is nice to have. And if we uh, if we got rid of democracy and things like elections and so on, uh, and if it meant that somebody had a job, maybe that'd be a good thing. So this tells you something. That I think it gives you a good broad overview of what's been, uh, you know, the kind of feeling out there in South Africa. And this is uh, big implications for uh, elections in South Africa and, you know, uh, how much people will, uh, you know, want to get involved in the electoral process. And you know, if people aren't voting, uh, that's a bit of a problem. Enjoying this analysis? Click here to sign up for our 30-day free trial for more content from the CIA. And Marius, so I'd like us to move a little bit away from the Afrobarometer results and look more generally at the state of our uh, democracy and people's willingness to engage with the formal democratic process. Um, when we look at voter turnout in municipal elections, over time, particularly over the period of about 2000 up till 2016, there's this gradual decline in voter turnout at, to, to, elect, to, to election polls. But then when we look at the national level and when we look at the outcomes of the national level voter turnout, we actually see the reverse trend. And so I would like you to help us understand what explains this outcome. Well, uh, just to give some context, in uh, municipal elections, uh, there's the uh, voter turnout has actually been uh, pretty firm and actually increased a bit. So in 2000, uh, we had the, the turnout of registered voters was 48%, uh, started around about that in 2006, and jumped to nearly 58% in uh, 2011 and to 58% uh, and started about 58% in 2016. But now what uh, the trend you need to watch is the... Uh, also voter turnout in national elections. So in uh, 1999, 72% of uh, the voting age population, so this was eligible voters, 72% of eligible voters uh, turned out at the polls in South Africa uh, that in 1999. But now we've seen a steady decline. So we've reached the point now where uh, in, in 2019, in the last uh, national election, only 49% of eligible voters actually turned out to the polls. We saw a voter turnout of 66% of people who were actually registered voters. So that still sounds pretty good. You know, two thirds of South Africans turned out to vote. But if we look at the proportion of people, so the proportion of all South Africans over 18 who turned out to vote, it was 49%, the lowest in post-apartheid South African history. So that is definitely not a good sign. And some, some people might say that uh, why are uh, local government elections, why is the turn out there pretty firm and it's uh, declining in national elections. Uh, it's a bit hard to say, but I would probably imagine that people, you probably have your core of people who are going to vote in every election, no matter what. You know, they're people who take their civic uh, responsibility as voters very seriously. And these are your people that are probably turning out, you know, it doesn't matter what kind of weather it is, you know, uh, or whatever the case is, you know, come rain or shine, they're going to be standing in the queue to go vote, doesn't matter how cold or hot it is. And whatever you so these are the people you kind of see your core core people coming out to every local government election they're also going to be the ones who come out and vote in your national elections but your kind of soft voters the people who like you know i might vote i might not that uh, proportion of people is increasing i think and we can see that reflected in the proportion of people who've turned out to vote in uh, our various national elections and as i say the, the trend is pretty clear i mean in 1999 89 percent of registered voters came out to vote in 2019, only 66%. 72% uh, of all eligible voters came out to vote in 1999. By 2019, only 49%. So it's clear that people are starting to, you know, check out the electoral process. And we can see that in things such as uh, levels of trust uh, within the Electoral Commission, uh, the proportion of people who are willing to not have elections in South Africa and so on. And all this is, it's quite worrying for uh, South African democracy. If uh, if we get to a point where, you know, people just don't think elections matter or if they don't think, you know, they, they don't uh, think them think of elections as being legitimate and, you know, just because a certain party got, to, you know, was the biggest party, that mean they have necessarily any right to govern because, you know, people don't really take elections seriously. This is a big problem for South Africa going forward and it's definitely something we, we have to watch. And this is something that, you know, I think civic society, the government, various political parties, I think they need to impress on people on how important it is to vote. But at the same time, we need to make sure that the government is responsive to voters. It's no surprise that we see people go, um, you know, we, we have lots of uh, protests, often violence in South Africa, 
And you know, if, uh, people talk about uh, the unheard making themselves heard because these are people who, for whatever reason, feel like they're being ignored by the government or the powers that be, and they feel that there's no, it's pointless going to go vote because nothing changes when they do go vote. So they, they turn to violence. Obviously, you can't condone this, but I think you can understand it. And if, you know, this is something that will, probably it's a trend we'll, we'll carry on seeing as, as long as also South Africa, uh, as we face the economic problems we have. And I think we can also look to what happened in July. If South Africa had been growing at 5% for the past 10 years on average, you know, we've had an unemployment rate of 15%, I don't think we would have seen those rights in July, but we obviously don't have all those kinds of things. So it's all pretty understandable. And I think anybody who you know, keeps an eye on South Africa wouldn't have, would have been, uh, uh, would maybe have been, uh, uh, would not have been, wouldn't have been unexpected, but I don't think they would have been uh, surprised by what happened in uh, July. They maybe wouldn't have liked it, but I don't think they would have been surprised. Thank you so much, Marius, for joining me this morning. We'd like to hear your thoughts. Do you think that South Africa's democratic process is in trouble? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you enjoy our insights, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already.